Right, I'm going to be looking at a series of functions questions where the questions are really all about the domain and range of functions. And these are four questions which my students found particularly tricky on a recent piece of work I sent them. So starting off with the first question here. Functions of range, they're all taken from Dr. Frost. You can look them up with the code E2278 if you want to try and find them. Or you can, the ones with your past paper questions, you can see I've listed where they've come from here. So in the first one, we've got two functions, f and g. Um, and obviously, this is a two-part question from here. And there's a, it's, I think the first part of the question was to show that f, g of x can be expressed in this form. But the whole point of this homework was to find out what the students knew about domain and range. And you're told another function, h of x, is given by 1 over this f, g of x. What values of x cannot be in the domain of h and you can see there's quite a wide range of answers of only a few students getting it right and the key to this question is the bottom of the fraction because you can only have um, this being defined if the bottom is not equal to zero because if you have a fraction and the denominator is equal to zero the bottom half of the fraction is zero then that fraction is undefined and a domain is all about what you can put into a function. So therefore, what will make the function defined? So what can we put into this function? So we can put anything that's not equal to naught. So let's just solve the bottom equaling to naught. Remember, the bottom equals this. So we're trying to work out where x minus 1 squared plus 16 will equal naught. So if we take the 16 to the opposite side of the x minus 1 squared, naturally, because this is minus, let's move that to this side. So we get 16 equals x minus 1 squared. And then we square root that. We're going to get plus or minus 4 will equal x minus 1. If you square root that side, you get, plus or, um, you get x minus 1. Remembering plus or minus 4 squared can equal 16, so therefore we can have either of those two. And then we're going to add 1 to both of these, so we could have 5 or minus 3 equal to x. So add 1 to 4, you can get um, 5. If you add 1 to minus 4, you get minus 3. And you can see why 5 and minus 3 were the correct answers. So let's just go back over the key thing. It's the denominator cannot equal 0. So we find out when this happens, and those are the two values we can't put in. Going on to the next one, it's exactly the same sort of question, except it says, explain why x cannot equal 1 for this function. And if you look at the bottom, the denominator, you've got x minus 1 there. And we know that x minus 1 cannot equal 0, so therefore x cannot equal positive 1. And looking at the answers that were accepted, because the denominator would equal 0 and therefore the function to be defined is nice. 7 divided by 0 is undefined, because you've got 7 divided by 0 is undefined. Now, they've not been quite so clear. Just because 1 minus 1 equals 0, it's not really going into the reasons. Denominator fraction cannot equal 0. Well, I think that's a really good reason. You'd get the marks of that in the GCC exam. But obviously, this is an AI. The word is looking for the word denominator or undefined or 7 divided by 0, either of those, uh, because a denominator cannot equal 0. I think, I guess, you must, to be complete, you should say, if the denominator equals 0, then the function's undefined would be a perfect answer here. Moving on to our next, we've got a function is fx is 4 minus 3x and g of x is 1 over 1 minus 2x here. Find a value of x that cannot be included in any domain of g. So let's just write g out so it's a bit larger on your screens. So g of x equals 1 over 1 minus 2x. So at this point, maybe you want to pause and try and work out what value of x cannot be included in any domain of g. So what we should realize the denominator cannot equal 0. So therefore 1 minus 2x cannot equal 0. So therefore 1 cannot equal 2x. So therefore half cannot equal x. And we can see that was our most popular answer, or 0 0.5. And then we had some other answers here um, which were not correct. Now this is a trickier domain and range function. You've got to realize all the key things that have been given to you. And one of the key things that's given to you 
is that a is greater than naught in the function f of x equals ax plus b. And you're also supposed to realize that f of x equals ax plus b is a straight line. So f of x equals ax plus b is a straight line. Remember, you've probably seen it as y equals mx plus c. So a is the gradient and b is the y-intercept. So if we know that a is the gradient and a is greater than naught, we know that it's going from low to high. So let's just draw in a nice little straight line for that. So we've got ourselves a straight line going upwards to gradient a. And we know that the domain is from 3 to 10. So the domain goes from 3 all the way up to 10. Remember, the, these are the values you'd put in. And the range, the values you get out, if you're going to do on the y-axis, goes from minus 1 to 13. So we can see that the change in y here okay, is going to be 14. And we can see the change in x here is going to be 7. So therefore the gradient will equal 14 over 7, which equals 2. So we know that f of x equals 2x plus something to be found. Now we also know two coordinates. We've got minus 1 and 3, and we've got 13 and 10. So if we know we've got minus 1 and 3, which is actually the coordinate 3 minus 1, so the x value is 3 when the y value is minus 1, so you put minus 1 here, put the 3 where the x is, we get 2 times 3 is 6, plus b. So therefore, b must equal minus 7. So we get a equal to 2, and we get b equal to minus 7. So look, a equal to b equals minus 7. And you see this was done by more students because we had a similar example in the class.